So hello everyone. Welcome to this another video of this channel. I am Abhishek Verma and you are watching Spring Basics with Spring Boot series. In today's video, we are going to see what is Spring Boot Dev Tools. So many times when I'm working with a fresher or a trainee, what they simply do is that they copy paste this dependency in their code and later on when I ask them what is the benefit of it, then they are just speechless. They don't tell me what is the benefit of this particular thing. So hence in today's video, we will try to understand what impact it is going to put on your production based code, what is the impact it will put while you are developing the code and is there any disadvantage also. So without wasting any more time, let's directly get started. So now we are in the IDE guys and as you can see, as always, I have copy pasted the previous demo and created demo number 16. Now before we make any change, first of all, let's see whether this demo is working fine or not. And for this, what I'll just do is I'll go here and we'll start this demo. So as I always say, it's a good practice to check whether your existing or the current thing is working fine or not. So as you can see that currently says starting demo, no active profile is set and the demo has been started, found owner with owner ID 100 and let's provide some owner ID as like 11. So since it is an odd owner ID, so we are getting the exception here. Yes, if you want to check the code in detail, then obviously you need to watch the previous videos. I mean, that's the rule. So here, one important thing to notice currently is that whenever we are starting this demo, so you see that in the log, how it is printing. We have already discussed this particular part in detail earlier also in the logger video, but let me just reiterate it here that first of all, it is showing you the current date and time. Then it is showing you the level of your log, whether it's an info level or error level, then it is showing the process ID here, this particular one, then these are the three dash or you can say three hyphens. And after this, your main log is starting. Then here it is showing you the name, which you will be using under your this application.yml or you can say application.properties for this spring.application.name. So since it is demo here also it is showing demo in case you are removing this particular one. So it is going to be empty. Now this next part is important here. So currently you see that whenever you start any Spring Boot application by default, the thread is your main thread. Now, why is it so? Because you know that Java can support multi-threading by default, there is always one thread and the name of that particular thread is your main, like from the main method, the name is coming as the main thread. And then we have rest of the logs here. Okay. So out of this whole story, only this particular main thread part was important here. Now, currently, if you will say that I need to make any change here. So let's say I will decide to change it to as 101 and I'll just save it. Now, what you see is that since I have already saved it, but already the application is stopped, which means currently there is no option that I can try whether this particular change is working fine or not. The only way to do that particular thing is that I need to go here and I need to restart the application. So this way I need to obviously restart the application. Now, since this default ID is an odd ID, hence it is showing me the thing. But why is it saying it is showing me some different kind of error here, guys cannot be open because it doesn't exist. So yeah, so if this kind of error is coming, then the simple option is that we need to reload. I mean, that sometimes it happens. So let's just do it. Yeah. So whenever you are making the video or doing anything new, these kind of issues can come. So now let me just do it and let's do it again. So for you also, sometimes if it says that properties file or something is not getting loaded, then the simple rule is that you need to, I mean, just refresh or update your demo. And that can happen in any application guys. Now you see, now we are getting the exact thing. So this time it has been done. And since the ID is 101, so we are getting this particular kind of exception here. So the main point is that currently in your Spring Boot application, if you want to make any change in your properties file, YAML file, or any other Java file, then the only way to test that particular thing, whether it is working fine or not is that you need to restart the application. But in HTML, you see the things are so simple in HTML. We just type or we just change something in that particular text file or that particular HTML file. We go to the browser and click refresh and the thing automatically comes up. We don't need to restart the same thing again. 
Now the same thing can be done in Spring Boot also with the help of DevTools. So let's directly go here on the Spring Initializer and add this dependency. So on the top also if you see I guess you can directly see here that first of all under this developer tools it is appearing otherwise in case let's say in future it is changing so we just need to type it as dev tools. So when you say dev tools it says this provides you faster application restart, live reload and configurations for enhanced development experience. So this is as by the name it says it is basically just a developer tool. So it is not going to enhance anything in your application which is already hosted but this is going to help you when you are developing the application. So let's select it and say explore. Now we will just go here and we'll come down. So let's see where it is and yeah this is the dependency guys which we need to add. Now as you know that this is the common thing which I always do but for you in case you are already creating a new application. So always the best possible thing is that whenever you are starting the things at that time only you know which all dependencies are required. So I'll go here and I'll provide this dependency here guys. So this is the way and let me just say here this particular as shift or tab and this is coming now. Now let me again just do a maven update here once. So generally like whenever you are changing your pom.xml or something it gets updated. But sometimes if it is not getting updated then the simple rule is just do a maven update on your own. Now again initially let's keep it as 100 only as of now and in pom.xml you see I have added this particular devtools dependency and that's it. Now here let me just clear these things and now if I just restart the application. So one change which you will see is that if we try to compare this one with all other demos here. So you see that initially when we just started with the spring demos at that time the boot word was not appearing. Then the moment we started declaring them as spring boot application from demo 7 then this boot word started appearing there. And now since we have added the dev tools dependency so this dev tools is also appearing here. So this simply says that there is a dev tools dependency here. Now what we will happen is that if I just go here and we'll start it from this particular one. So let me just give it a start. Now here you see the number one change. The number one change is that this time the name of your thread is not main. The name of your thread is restarted main. That's the number one thing. And currently the code is already running here. Rest everything seems fine. Just one more line got added here that it says live reload server is running on this particular port. Now currently you know that my application is not a web application. It is just a simple application. So I won't be able to show you anything like this live reload server or something. This we will again discuss once we will move towards the spring rest playlist. Yeah. So there, this is the one. But currently let me just go here and as of now let's say 12 so that we can ensure that application keeps running. Because if I will say 11 it will just stop. Yeah. So this is how it is going to look like. Now it is saying 12 and again the application has been stopped here. So that means I need to restart. I mean that is the number one rule at least the application should not stop. Yeah. Now currently the application is again running. Now let's say I make a change here. So I'll go to this one and let me make it as 102 or something like this. So the moment I make it as 102 you see that I have not made any other change. I didn't click anywhere but here you see what happened in the logs. So after doing this what it did was it printed you something like this file watcher. So this another thread is already running parallelly and what this file watcher noticed was that there is some change in the class path. So since like someone asked me on the I guess my video also that what do you mean by the class path for this I have already created a YouTube short and on Instagram reel also of less than one minute has been created. So you can check that link on the top right corner. So this here it says that there is some change in the class path thing. Yeah and it says there is zero addition. So there is no new addition, no new deletion. Just one simple modification has been done here. And once it has been done, so what change it did is that on same process ID it started the application again. So you see the same thing is appearing again which means application has been restarted and this time it has been restarted with this ID as 102. So that is the main point guys. 
so this dev tools will basically help you when you are developing your application because many times what happens is that we just try to make one simple small change and then we want to check whether it is working fine or not so we again and again we need to restart the application now currently you see that in my application we don't have any more any bigger things yeah but let's say that you are making a web application or something and then there are too many things so again and again if you will restart then it will take you more time but if there is something like this dev tools so you just make a change and automatically it will get reloaded so in case if it is a web application then it will be a plus point for you that you can directly go to your postman or the browser and you can check whether the change is getting affected or not now not only this even if we make any change in these of the classes so let's just go to this repository impl here and here let's try to make a change so instead of these bean let's say sample okay so let's just call it as sample and currently i have not saved it so still you can see this star icon on the top which means it is not saved and currently this is how it is going to look like now let me just save it so after saving you see that again it has been restarted so without doing anything again it says a file watcher and again it says that there is some modification one modification is being done and hence it has been restarted again so this time it says bean sample created so whether it's a property file change yaml file change or a java file change any kind of change you can check here it directly and that's why we call it as developer tool if you say that okay what impact will it put on my application which is already hosted on some particular server or cloud the answer is it is not going to provide you any impact there because generally whenever you are hosting your application on some cloud or let's say some server how you do is that you create a jar file maybe you are creating the jar file directly or maybe you are taking help of jenkins or some other ci cd tool so you create a jar file you deploy the jar file there yes so once a jar file has been created then you make any change in your code it is not going to impact directly there there the only option is that you need to recreate the jar file and then you need to restart the things so this option is only for the development purpose and the main benefit is to faster the development so that you don't need to refresh or restart the same thing again and again and the only main point for this particular thing so that it keeps working is that application should not be stopped so currently if i will stop the application so let's say i give here as 11 or something now after this if the application is going to stop or let's say i stop it manually something like this so in that particular case so here i guess it hanged uh, somehow so in that particular case you will see that afterwards i will make any change then it won't impact then i need to restart it okay so that's the major point guys and yeah as of now that's it because it was just a simple application but i hope you have understood what is the main point of dev tools here now you can decide whether you should be adding dev tools in your application or not so i hope now you have understood and hope to see you in the next video guys just keep on liking the video sharing it with your friends and comment so that we can increase our community more thanks everyone